as a full bar because you're watching it. Uh, well, I'm still gonna let it ride. If there's anything I start to recognize, we can stop, but I'm not sure. From the wintry cold. But after a few minutes of picking, he had success, and his cell door swung open. Yeah, but barefoot bandit days, yet, fuck yeah. Because there were more locked doors ahead. He knew he only had a few minutes left before the guards would return, you said so he wasted no time attempting to pick his way through the remaining security doors. No now, advice, Alex, him, just to keep yourself distracted, it'll get facility. easier. Sorry but to hear that, man. The bad news it sucks. was that he was only halfway to freedom. You see, he was still mm. well within the search perimeter, which meant at any moment the alarm could go off and he'd still be caught. At 5.45 a.m., the guards returned, peering into his cell, and this is what they saw. Shiratori sound asleep in his futon bed. But of course, what they didn't realize was that they were looking at something else. <gasps> a pile of loose floorboards underneath his duvet designed to trick them. Outsmarted. Next morning, Fuck yeah. They finally discovered the truth, and the alarm was sounding. They get a duvet by then, in that prison? Shiratori was long gone. Now, he had escaped, He's a prime but if you watched any of our previous videos, you'll know that things aren't always as Congrats on the huge job, fact, Parsket. I'm really glad to hear that, man. AKA the prison you deserve magician, it. Hope you enjoy it. This was only the beginning. Three days later, he was caught trying to steal supplies from a hospital. And just like that, he was back in the slammer. But this time, for his escape attempt, he was sentenced to life in prison. He would Shit. never be with his family again, his wife and his daughter, and all the months of planning had led to just three days of freedom. It now seemed he'd be locked up for a very long time. Until Six he developed later, superpowers. In, 1942, in the midst of the Second World War, Shiratori found himself transferred to Akita Prison in Akita City. There, the guards treated him even worse than He's in tier one, They had heard about Shiratori's previous escape the and were determined to make an example snack. out of him. They wanted to make sure he would never escape again. Along with the usual the beatings, magic he arbiter. was forced to partake in extreme manual labor, made to sleep on the hard concrete floor in the severe winter cold, and placed into solitary confinement for extended periods of time. Now this was a specially made solitary confinement cell, which was very small Haven't and seen had that a very arbiter. high ceiling, we can get there, the walls covered with copper sheets so smooth that it was impossible to grip. In addition, there was almost no sunlight even in the daytime, with the only window light coming from a small sealed skylight high above. This was a room designed to keep escape artists from escaping. And if that wasn't enough, the guards also made sure that Shiratori was handcuffed at all times. Now, despite God the constant damn. abuse, one of the guards, Kobayashi, in fact the head guard, took pity on him. Kobayashi never laid Aww. a finger and even seemed to check up on him from time to time, concerned Just to make for out. his well-being. So Perhaps sweet. this made life a little more bearable for Shiratori. And it might have even been what kept his will alive all the way to the night of June 15th. Thanks. Appreciate it, it mess. Stormy night. And, and yeah, we'll do more was in soon, the middle ish. of one of his extended stays in solitary confinement. At around midnight, one of the guards peered into his cell and couldn't believe his eyes. He opened the cell door and looked around in astonishment as Yoshie Shiratori had vanished into thin air. <laughs> All that was left was his handcuffs. So how did he do it? He actually well, just straight there vanished. There were a few assumptions the guards made that did not apply to Shiratori. For one, handcuffs simply didn't work on him. Shiratori was actually a master of getting out of handcuffs, and in fact had several methods to choose from. Here, he decided to go with the familiar lock picking method, but he really could have gone with any of them. He had thoroughly scoured his this surroundings to find anything that generosity. could be of use man. in an escape. And Thanks just like in our in prison, BKD. he was able to uncover a loose bit of wire. Perhaps it was from one of the items Kobayashi brought him, but this wasn't clear. After freeing himself from the cuffs, he placed his palms and soles of his feet on the smooth copper sheets <gasps> and started climbing the unclimbable wall. It turned out Shiratori was also an expert climber. So this guy just had maxed out fucking stats. Scale like a lizard. Once he reached the skylight above, he noticed that, yes, the window was sealed, but the wooden framing around it was starting to rot. And so thereafter, night after night, when the guards weren't looking, he'd climb the copper walls and loosen the framing, bit by bit. Afterwards, he'd climb back down and place the handcuffs back on. That's oh really shit! After a couple of months, the window finally came loose, and from there, That's it so was just smart. about choosing the right day. He waited until a particular stormy night, so the guards wouldn't hear the footsteps He's on the, the prime. roof. And Sax and Rizum Sontag. He had Fuck yeah, man. From doing well. Again. Now this time, he wouldn't be caught. Or, at least, not in the way you'd expect. Three months later, on he September became the 18th, warden of the that prison. Kobayashi was at home, 
when he heard a knock on the door. To his surprise, it was the fugitive Yoshie Shiratori, unkempt and disheveled, and he needed a favor. A stunned Kobayashi took him in and fed him, all the what? while listening to what he had to say. Shiratori explained that he didn't actually mind being in prison, and that the only reason he escaped twice now was due to the tremendous abuse he suffered at the hands of the sadistic guards. Makes Kobayashi, sense. however, was the only one who treated him with any amount of respect, and so he felt he owed it to him to let him in on his grand plan. Now, this plan involved Shiratori willingly, yes, handing himself over to the Justice Department, where he could then personally make a case for how corrupt and barbaric the Japanese prison system was, and there needed to be reform. He Why? wanted to campaign for change, and in the process, gain his legal freedom through a he civil war. He said five Liam, felt this was man. the only way he could realistically and yeah, two end people up with his family. This, of course, was and maybe a creepy. super ambitious plan, and as a fugitive on the run, he was well aware of it. And we watched that a while ago, Sloth. So Kobayashi, the well-respected head guard of Akita Prison, to vouch for him, to strengthen his credibility. As the only guard who ever treated him right, he had a feeling Kobayashi would do the right thing. Minutes later, while Shiratori was in the toilet, Kobayashi called the police. Maybe not a great plan. Just like that, Shiratori was back in prison. Yeah, and awful time, plan. He vowed never to trust an officer of the law again. For the second yeah. escape, the courthouse added three more years to his life sentence. Now, Shiratori requested to be sent to a Tokyo prison, where the weather was warmer, as he couldn't stand the cold in the northern prisons. His previous stints had weakened him severely, but he was denied his request. Instead, the judge sentenced him to the infamous Abashiri prison in Ooh. Hokkaido, the northernmost prison in Japan. Good no God. man had ever escaped from this wintry hellhole of a prison. It was now 1943, and the cold was unbearable in Abashiri, as the temperature in the cells was below freezing point. If Whenever inmates dinners. received their prison food, the miso soup and soy sauce would often freeze up. In this temperature, a handcuffed Shiratori was thrown into an open cell in summer clothing, and he immediately felt the paralyzing sting of cold air. Perhaps in a fit of desperation, he tried Robbie. to force himself past the guards, but they were able to push him back and beat him down. An enraged and defiant Shiratori stood back up and vowed that he would escape from Abashiri prison, like he's always done, and that there was nothing they could do about it. In fact, he they could kill him. there was little point even putting handcuffs on him, no, as he always I'll find a way a to sec. break free. If not by lockpicking, then, well, this. He then proceeded to rip apart the chain what? of his handcuffs to the horror of the guards. It turned out Shiratori had another special ability. Aside from his outstanding climbing abilities, he also possessed incredible strength. This he is a lie. Superhuman straight up, this is back made up. Back in Akita prison, he could have broken free of the cuffs in a physical way memes. if he didn't have to put them back on. Now, this was impressive, I'm sorry, I didn't see but it wasn't but yeah, so I did smart watch to lay trailer. his cards on the table like that, as the guards were starting to build an escape profile on him. They knew he had lock-picking abilities, lizard-like climbing Thanks abilities, prime, and now almost superhuman strength. No, it, and so this they is set out to devise the ultimate escape-proof cell, one that was sure to be Shiratori-proof. And they came up with this. The new cell had steel fixtures with a low chance of rot. Any openings, even the bars removed, were made smaller than He can also room. run at 90 no miles per hour. Yeah. Through. He had specially made solid iron hand. He utilizes the speed force to turn back the back clock. And leg cuffs that made him barely able to stand. These cuffs weighed 20 kgs each and had no keyhole, which meant they could not be lockpicked. And the only way they could be removed was by two metalwork specialists who would come once every few weeks to remove them in an arduous two hour process. It was at this point and only this point that he could even take a bath. And he certainly needed one as weeks of being shackled up with no movement meant his cuff wounds were infested with maggots. On top of that, and as cold as it had already been, it wasn't even peak winter yet. Any strength he would have left would surely be nullified by He's the, the prime clicky, the Martin case, and the tier one umbrella sure cut his girl and the tier one in half. One and deal. so that was it. Even for Shiratori, this was too much. Maybe as winter chainsaw. came, he succumbed to his fate. Every day, the guards would slide his meal through the opening, and he'd be forced to grovel like a dog. His hand and leg cuffs made every action awkward and uncomfortable, with even sleeping being a pain. There was no doubt life in Abashiri prison was absolute torture. Now, fast Easy forward, Austin, Shiratori Russo was Bell. somehow able to survive through the winter, and spring was coming. This meant he was starting to get his strength back. But still, what could he really do? He was literally in a bind. Months passed and 
Well, nothing seemed to happen. Then one night, in August, a guard in his office was doing some paperwork when he heard some shuffling on the roof. He wasn't sure what it was, but he decided to check on the prisoners. As he looked inside Shiratori's inescapable cell, he was stunned. The futon bed and there was five women in there folded up, and no Shiratori. 20 kg handcuffs and leg cuffs that would have required two specialists two hours to remove was placed on the side, and Shiratori was nowhere to be seen. He had finally fulfilled his promise to the guards. The alarm immediately Turns out he was working for the prison the in disguise. He escaped party, a like a week ago. He truly disappeared. But how on earth did this happen? How did he escape from the fortress that was Abashiri Prison? Thanks to the Prime Sketchbook. Well, preparation had started six months earlier. Thank At you, the time, Liam. God he didn't have the strength or stamina Even to mount any sort stuff, of man. escape, not to mention the restraints he was in. But one thing he did have was time and patience. Every day, the guards would slide his meal through, and while he struggled to eat his food off the floor, he always made sure to save a little bit of the miso soup in the corner. You see, every night, he would hobble awkwardly to the inspection window and splash a little of it on the steel frame. He would also dab some on his handcuffs and leg cuffs. Now, his intention was for the salt content of the miso soup to oxidize the screws and bolts, eventually corroding and loosening it. That After wouldn't month, work. This technique of rusting through the iron actually worked, and the first no, that th uh, there's no fucking the way that would work. Saw screws and bolts coming loose. Unless they're giving him like the, the fucking as a sort of saltiest screwdriver. miso of all By the time. End of spring, he was I mean, able I guess. to fully remove his handcuffs and leg cuffs, as well as the steel frame of the inspection window. But there was a problem. The size of the opening was smaller than his body, which meant he couldn't fit through. A contingency thought out by the guards. What they didn't account for, though, was Shiratori's fourth ability, <laughs> which involved being able to dislocate his joints at will. With this, he was now able to slide through the opening like a caterpillar. This repertoire of skills thus surely making him an honorary member of the X-Men. With that, this he is climbed through a fanfic. window in the roof. It's like a Death vanished. Note chapter. Impressively, Shiratori had now escaped from three prisons, as well as being the only man to ever escape Abashiri prison. Now, good on him for escaping. But this was northern Hokkaido, and the only direction a tier one he could have gone to was the cold Thanos. mountains. Actually, the prison guards felt that they had the last laugh, because if the cold didn't get him, the mountain bears certainly would. But he had a fifth Despite ability, likelihood, the ability to control the minds of bears. Hopeful, and that was Shiratori's wife. But she was still worried, because even if he was alive, she knew he wouldn't be able to make it back to his family, as the authorities would be constantly on his tail. Which is why she was desperately and secretly hoping that Japan would lose the war, as that would enable Sorry the US to, that, to take over uh, the country. I stream daily, Meaning, but no schedule. Everyone would likely forget about her husband. Of course, she kept this to herself. But then, a year later, in August mm -hmm. 1945, she got her wish. He's the Prime Slam. His fifth ability, wife. Yes. The Americans had now taken over the country's penitentiary system, and sweeping changes were being made. And it did seem, perhaps, that the manhunt for Yoshie Shiratori had now taken a back seat. Yet the question remained: Where was he? And was he even alive? Is the answer, Tony? Was yes, he was alive and living a solitary life. This time, self-imposed. It turned out he had discovered mm -hmm. an abandoned mine on a mountainside in the Hokkaido wilderness and was able to make a home for himself. For food, he lived off nuts and berries, wild rabbits and raccoons, and was even able to learn to catch crabs from a stream by observing the habits of bears. Life was steady and safe, but after a while, curiosity got the better of him. And so after two years of isolation, he made his way down the mountain to a nearby village. What he saw astounded him. The streets were filled with signs written in English. The posters and flags emblematic of the war. And that's how he became and president strange, of Japan. Young Japanese girls were holding hands with American soldiers. What on earth was going on? He grabbed a newspaper that had been set aside, flipped through the pages, and it was only then that he found out about the atomic bombs, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan had surrendered the previous year, and he couldn't believe it. As well as I, wife, I said that earlier, so we've watched Ray's Last hunt, Jump a long so time ago. I made a video on Ray's Last Jump, too. Lifestyle. He headed south of Abashiri for the next 50 days, until he reached the city of Sapporo. At this point, he was starving, so he found himself a nice ripe tomato from a nearby field, which was a huge mistake. 
A farmer had spotted him and mistook him for a well-known local thief, which led to a scuffle resulting in the farmer's abdomen being pierced by a blade. Sadly, he bled out and died. But not before Shiratori was arrested for the crime. It wasn't long until police found out that they in fact had the infamous Yoshie Shiratori in their custody. For this shit is super fake, no fucking murdered, chance. Farmer, despite his claims of self-defense, he was sentenced to death by the district court of Sapporo. And in 1947, he was sent to Sapporo prison to await execution. Now, to ensure he wouldn't escape this time while on death row, Makes he tier was one, placed Master under 24-hour surveillance with six armed guards personally assigned to his watch. As for the cell itself, it was upgraded further from the one in Abashiri prison with reinforced doors, ceilings, bars, windows. In fact, how would he get arrested for a farmer's death in the middle of fucking head, nowhere? Not just his body. Learning from the it's not like it's GTA RP well, where it gets instantly reported. Joints, he certainly can't dislocate his skull. As long as his head can't fit, they were good. The six guards were so confident, in fact, that they didn't even bother cuffing him. Now, Shiratori was getting old, and the odds of escaping by this point were looking slim. As his execution loomed near, there was little he could really do, and the guards knew that. They could see the desperation on his face, looking up, searching for an escape plan that they knew would never come. Though, still, just in case, they made sure to search his room every night while he was taking a bath in the bathhouse, inspecting the ceiling, skylight, and any other openings. A month passed, and winter was now coming, weakening him further and the realization was starting to dawn on him. He grew increasingly despondent, staying in bed, refusing to wake up. But this was all an act. The guards. This went on for a while until one morning, the guards had enough and entered the cell to discipline him. They flipped over the duvet and he was gone. <laughs> this was not possible. How did he do it this time? Going back to when he was first placed under 24-hour surveillance with the six armed guards personally assigned to his watch. He had, in fact, conditioned them... His fifth ability? And shape shifting. ...from the very start. In fact, he never left. because his previous escape... He was one of the floorboards. ...climbing through skylight windows on ceilings, but also his suspicious yet, as it turned out, very intentional behavior of constantly looking up to figure out an escape plan. Little did they know, it was all an act, and that he already had one but it would be taking place precisely where they weren't looking. You see, it turned out the authorities were so concerned with him escaping Maybe through a window Pharaoh or and sunny. skylight that they neglected to reinforce the bottom. This ironically ended up being his easiest and simplest escape because all he had to do was remove the bolted floorboards, which wasn't easy, but he had experience, and using random cutlery and a miso soup bowl, dig his way yeah, but they checked his cell him, every night, and, and how did he, he unbolt the floor? Due to A, the guards not suspecting this approach, and B, the floorboard panels being put back in place every night after digging. The six guards thought they were keeping a good eye on him, even at night, but with the hole consistently positioned underneath the futon and duvet, and it increasingly becoming the norm to refuse the orders of the guards to wake up, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Placing a pile of loose floorboards underneath the duvet to trick them was also a callback to his first prison escape in Aomori. So he had now escaped from telling. prison four times. And by this point, the story is starting to get ridiculous. But Also, the, the dirt has to go somewhere. Capture and escape, capture and Where escape did he put the dirt? about to end. Because a year later, in 1948, Shiratori was exhausted. He was in his 40s now, and this he was ate a it. young man's game. <laughs> One day, in the Kotoni neighborhood, still in trouble, <laughs> as he stopped to rest. A policeman just happened to sit by his side for a smoke. He didn't know who Shiratori was, but he struck up a conversation with him. Hey, Shiratori, of course, feels. was wary of his presence and tried to play it cool, all the while attempting to figure out a way to remove himself from the situation without being suspicious. Suddenly, the policeman did something unexpected, at least to him. He pulled out another cigarette and offered it to him. Shiratori was stunned. You see, cigarettes were expensive luxury items in Japan at the time, and the fact that someone offered it to him just out of the kindness of his heart brought tears to his eyes. Not to mention all his life he had been abused and mistreated by officers of the law, with even the head guard Kobayashi turning his back on him. And here was an instance of an officer treating him kindly, nobody. with respect, and with no prejudgment. As he smoked the cigarette, Shiratori couldn't help but tell the it officer was his full name, Yoshie Shiratori and that he had escaped from Sapporo prison last year. In fact, he had escaped from prison four times in his life. 
it was strangely a relief to get it all off his chest. And he was even ready for the consequences. After the Kobayashi incident, he had vowed never to trust another officer of the law again. But the simple act of receiving Thanks a cigarette some big from a stranger and Eve broke and lost boy. Of course, he was arrested again. But this time, things were different. Maybe it was the fact that he willingly gave himself up, or that Japan's justice system was going through a change. But the High Court of Sapporo became sympathetic to Shiratori's plight, and some of his past claims were recognized, such as acknowledging the farmer's death as a legitimate case of self-defense. They also made note that throughout all four of his prison escapes, he didn't kill or injure a single guard, despite the abuse he may have suffered at their hands. At the end of the deliberation, the High Court dismissed the murder charge, revoking his death sentence, and instead sentenced him to just 20 years in prison. Aww. Then, they approved his request to be transferred to a Tokyo prison. Or he where he broke out again. Warmer. He was getting what he wanted. In Tokyo, he was sent to Fuchu prison, where, for the first time, the guards actually treated him well. It was a weird feeling. There were all these precautions and security measures in place to ensure that the infamous prison break magician wouldn't escape. But the truth where was, he fought Shiratori didn't really care anymore. Everything he'd been fighting against, the mistreatment from guards, the death penalty, even the northern climate, was no longer of concern. And he was at peace. There was no need to escape anymore. He finally accepted his punishment, and for the remainder of his sentence, acted as a model prisoner. Just 14 years later, in 1961, he was released on parole. And for the first time in a long time, he was truly a free man. He decided to head back to Aomori, where it all began, and meet up with his daughter, who by this point, unfortunately, was the only family member he had left. For his incredible escapes, Yoshie Shiratori became a legend, an anti-hero in Japan. But it was very much the opposite for the country's penitentiary system, which had somehow allowed him to escape time and time again. This was a national embarrassment for Japan, but just as preventing criminals from breaking out of the system is vital to the safety of society, or so monkey. is preventing them from monkey. breaking into the system. Your system, that is. And for that, I'd personally recommend Dashlane. Oh, because son Dashlane of a bitch, the Shiratori used Dashlane? Passwords super duper easy. Dashlane is good though. So I don't believe any of this to be honest. How, how do I spell his name? Shiratori maybe? Oh, here it is. Yoshie Shiratori. The prison escapes may have happened, but the way they happened absolutely cannot be real. I'll watch the follow-up, but the one that really sticks out to me is his fourth one. And simplest escape, because all he had to do was remove the bolt. He dug himself out of prison using a miso soup bowl in a place where he was being monitored 24 hours a day. This dirt has to go somewhere. So where was he putting all of this dirt? He just ate the dirt. There's no fucking chance he ate this much dirt. He would go septic. No fucking way. He would absolutely, at some point, die from it. That'd be way too much dirt. Unless, again, that was one of his superpowers, turning dirt into nutrients. But here, we'll watch the follow-up, see if they answer those questions. Because I, I, I don't believe it in the toilet but they'd hear him flushing the toilet constantly if there even was a toilet to flush or they'd hear him or see him constantly going over to the place where the toilet is windows that wouldn't work either because there'd be dirt all on the windows and he's, he's being monitored 24 hours a day he'd have to take the miso soup bowl up and throw it out the window go back down and do this time and time again he'd have to keep going in and out which increases the chance that he gets caught. But we'll watch this and see if it answers it. I'm going to go say goodnight to Tiana real quick, though. Thanks for the gifts of Cavi and Risa Pioneer and Actor. That's, uh, I was talking about that the other day. She's new addition to the team. Her name's Chelsea. Is that a suggestion gaming or is that like a video thing? 
And yeah, quite a bit ban list. Thanks for the bits, Manic. I'll be right back. This video is made possible Prime, by Alex. Curiosity Stream. By signing up at the link in the description, you'll also get Nebula. I assume you've already watched the incredible Japanese prison break. Just and finished it. As it turns out, many of you had some lingering questions that needed answering. Like, where did all the dirt go? Hey, How that's what I said. Handcuffs with their bare hands. Why didn't anyone see the handcuffs? Could have been frozen. I can suit? believe How that can one. Had three more years to a life sentence. What exactly was Shiratori's initial crime that led to his first arrest? What happened in his life after being released from prison? Was this whole video tier one just an ad, bro? And the as a bonus, spooby. what's the next Kento Bento video going to be about? We'll get to all of that, but by far the most common question was Where, where did, did all the dirt, dirt go? So let's start with that. Thanks to Risa Mig, Bob Goblin, Big Ski, and <gasps> final escape. The illustration show. Oh, sorry, to, sorry to hit a pause, champ. Nolix, it's good to see you again, man. Holy shit, you're dropping even fucking fatter gift subs, my man. Good lord. Thank you for the huge hundred. Holy shit. God damn. Thanks to the bits Manic and Gift Sub Noodle Boy. And thank you for the bits, Jacob. My week's been alright. Fuck, Nolix, thank you. Thanks to the resub Big Mechs and the Prime Nova. Have a good night, Falcon. God damn. Shows him Thank you. straight down beneath the floorboards. But how can that be if there was no place to hide the dirt? Well, this guy thinks the only possible explanation is that he must have eaten it. Others have suggested that Shiratori must have pulled a Shawshank Redemption and over time emptied it in the yard. But as far as I'm aware, he was in isolation at all times. Is it so that's subs probably butter? not what happened. The prime creator. No, the answer is actually pretty simple. Just as with most building structures, the foundation of the cell isn't built directly on the surface of the soil, which means there was more than enough room underneath the floorboards for the dirt to fit. And sorry that this wasn't clearly illustrated in the drawing, uh, but let's all blame Charlie the illustrator for that. Another common remark uh, is that this video must be fake. Ah, uh, I no see. Anyone can that makes a lot more sense. Hands. Well, this. I didn't even think of that. Documented. And of course, what makes this story worth telling in the first place is precisely because it doesn't seem real. But specifically about the handcuffs, remember, these were cuffs from the 1930s in Japan. I think breaking them isn't and too rebellion. an idea when you consider, and I'll quote this Reddit user, that Japanese iron at the time wasn't especially pure, mostly deriving from iron sand, which has a ton of impurities. It's likely Shiratori could snap the cuffs along the weak link. And on top of that, we know Shiratori had immense strength making this all the more plausible. But what about his escape from the- Somebody's like hitting their car with a sledgehammer right now. The 20 kg solid Weird. iron handcuffs and leg cuffs after using the salty miso soup. Why didn't anyone notice the rust? Those metalwork guys apparently came every couple weeks or so to remove his cuffs so he could take a bath. By the way, sorry about the maggot shot. So why didn't they see anything? Well, the rusting was intentionally made obvious in the illustrations to demonstrate clearly what was going on. That was my call. But in reality, it wasn't so visible. And the way the specialist removed the cuffs every few weeks was by breaking apart the actual metal. So they never actually paid too much attention to the screws and bolts. Okay, so this one was kind of surprising to me. Quite a few people ask, how could there be three more years added to a life sentence? As was the case for Shiratori after his second escape. No, this wasn't a mistake in the script, nor does it mean that the prison keeps the corpse three years after death. Rather, the answer <laughs> is that cool. a life sentence is not what you think it is. A life sentence or life imprisonment can mean, yes, inmates remain in prison for the rest of their natural lives. But it could also mean for a fixed period of time, or until they are paroled. In 1930s Japan, I believe this period was at least 10 years. Nowadays, it's increased to about 35 years. And this may also help you understand how some criminals can be given multiple life sentences, like two or three or even ten. How about we just change the nomenclature the and stop calling them life sentences? An accomplice in the Oklahoma City bombing, 161 consecutive 
life sentences. Okay, then what exactly was Shiratori's initial crime? The one that got him imprisoned in the first place? This was asked a lot in the comments too, even though I actually addressed it at the very beginning of the video. There some Prisoner parts in Yoshi tier one Shiratori place. had had enough. He was forced to confess to a murder he did not commit. But just to elaborate on this, Shiratori had a rough upbringing after his father died and his mother abandoned him at the age of two. And he later found himself involved with a tier one crowd, tigre. or seemingly some sort of gang which may explain how he developed such skills as lock picking, handcuff breaking, and prison parkour. Now, it was apparently these people who were the ones responsible for committing the murder, not Shiratori, but he made the mistake of tagging along. After they were all arrested, what happened was that the group turned on him and claimed he was in fact the murderer, and along with the police beating a false confession out of him, became the fall guy, and he was quickly convicted. Now that's apparently the story, but the circumstances surrounding this was too ambiguous for the courts, which is why he was still sentenced to 20 years at the end. As He's the prime toxic waste. The farmer's murder, a legitimate case of self-defense, but not the initial murder. So all that was what led to the events at the start of the video. As for what happened to him 28 years later after being released from Fuchu prison, by the way, this was the same prison that was referenced in the 300 million yen robbery that I covered in the Japanese bank heist video, a famous heist that took place seven years after Shiratori was released from prison. I already touched on this a little with him meeting his daughter, which was a nice note to end the video on, but according to some sources, it appears, unfortunately, that his relationship with her was somewhat strained. Thanks for the research, isn't that surprising considering the stigma in Japan of having a relative in prison and her never actually meeting him before. So after his release, yes, he was happy to see her, but he later ended up bouncing around Japan doing odd jobs in various cities, Thanks some mainly fan construction GTA, some Reggie. and Actually, why don't I play you the alternative ending that wasn't shown on YouTube, but only on the Nebula streaming platform? Just 14 years later, in 1961... Oh, director's cut. The Snyder Cut. And for the first time in a long time, he was truly a free man. He decided to head back to Aomori, where it all began, and meet up with his daughter, who by this point, unfortunately, was the only family member he had left. For his incredible escapes, Yoshie Shiratori became a legend, an anti-hero in Japanese popular culture, read about in books and depicted in movies. And even though Shiratori passed away in 1979 at the age of 71, his legacy lives on, perhaps the most, in the one place he wanted to leave more than any other, Abashiri Prison or at least what has now become the Abashiri Prison Museum. Oh, we saw this. Shiratori has been immortalized. This was on the Wikipedia page. Display, simulating his renowned miso soup escape. That's pretty cool. So I was able to end the video this way, letting the story breathe, Thanks because new kids have videos all super. go up on Nebula completely ad-free. Thousands of high-budget Sonic did Game of Thrones, Patrick H. Willems, an experiment on our own terms. We've only just started, but it's released a mystery. The Holy shit, this robbery, is like a... The real war of Wait, this is actually like a seven-minute ad. Car, which makes this one all the more fast myself and revealing the title, as plans can always change, but I will say it's somewhat Halloween in... God damn. Yeah, that was good. I do not think we watched that ever. None of that ringed any bells. What might have happened is we started it and then abandoned it. I'm